Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to talk about our portable dice tower. You know, it's a Dungeons and Dragons fact that having a dice tower makes you 50% more cool. So my daughter is playing Dungeons and Dragons at college, which is appropriate because she's a college student. She's hanging out with her friends. I used to play Dungeons and Dragons back when I was in high school. And I gotta tell you, it's a great way to make friends play a strategy game, wear ironic t-shirts, eat pizza, it's just a great time. Now those of you who haven't played Dungeons and Dragons or similar games probably think that playing it is something like this. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! No, it's not like that. That's a different segment of geek culture. They're nice people too, just not our particular segment. They do their thing, we do our thing. Dungeons and Dragons is where you play a game invade a dungeon with a bunch of your friends, fight monsters, and you figure things out through the dungeon. It's very intellectual, and it uses a lot of math. Now, Dungeons and Dragons players use dice. These are my daughter's dice. It's a Harry Potter-themed pouch here. Dice are usually carried in felt pouches or vinyl pouches, something like that, because Dungeons and Dragons players never have one set of dice. Oh no, they have two, three, four, ten sets of dice, and the dice are different sizes and shapes for different types of chance. She's got a lot here, uh, including some metal dice pieces here, which are really nice, and they're good at throwing at other people if they really annoy you during the game. A nice feature that she has there. Now, most Dungeons & Dragons players use trays like this to roll their dice into, because if you take a handful of dice and roll them, they might roll off the table. But if you roll them into a tray, they're all nicely contained. That's great. Well, you can take it a step higher and use what's called a dice tower. A dice tower is just a baffle that rolls your dice for you and dumps it into that same tray. And it's really nice because at Dungeons and Dragons, you might roll five or six dice, eight or 10 dice or whatever at once if you've got a large game going. So the dice tower rolls it all for you and it's all right here in the tray. Really easy to maintain. Now she wanted a tower and she wanted a simple tower, but she wanted a tower that was collapsible that she could put into her backpack. So when she goes off to college, she can throw it in her backpack. It's nice and safe when she gets where she's going, to play a game, she can set it up, do her thing, and then fold it back up. So that's what we built. We built three of these. This is it in the deployed stand. This is what it looks like when you throw it in your backpack. The tower folds right into the tray. When you want to play, you pull it apart, set it up, you're good to go. So we have two of the three towers we made. The third tower didn't make it, but we'll talk about that later. But we have a green one and a black one that did work. So we're going to show you how we made these. The first thing we did was test our baffle design to make sure it would work with multiple dice. It did. Then it was time to get the router out. The router is on the bottom of this flip top table we have. It saves space and puts multiple tools in one place so we really like this thing. See how easy it is to set it up? It's literally two workbenches in the space of one. The portable shop vac is plugged into the router. This shop vac comes on automatically when the router is turned on and turns off a few seconds after the router shuts down. This little shop vac is super effective at removing sawdust from the router. It's really cleaned up the shop since we started using it. The first router job is a quarter inch slot that will hold the backer board of the dice tower. Our D&D player cleans the sawdust out of the channel so that it will be clear for later use. Then I change the bit to a 1 8 inch bit. This will be for the plexiglass on the front of the dice tower. The freshly routed side pieces are now cut to a height of 10 inches. I cut six of these because we're making three dice towers. Then I use two different saws to cut some three by three inch scrap into the ramp at the bottom of the dice tower that will kick the dice into the tray. You can see those ramps I just cut at the back of the table while I sand the side pieces. The plexiglass face and the wooden backer are cut now on the saw. You can cut plexiglass on a saw, you just have to move really slowly. 
the dust cover on our chop saw can be removed so that the saw can be rotated to 45 degrees, which is what I'm doing here. I'll need to cut 45 degree angles into the paddles for our baffles that'll go inside the dice tower. And now we assemble. Right now we're using wood glue to attach the backer boards into that original slot that we cut with the router. And then that angle piece that will kick the dice out at the bottom of the baffles is put in. And that gives us a three-sided box. The completed outside of the box can now be sanded to make sure everything is square and looks good. And then those 45 degree angle baffles I cut earlier are carefully measured and then glued in place. So each dice will hit three paddles or baffles on the way down. We're really not sure what the technical term is for these. And then each dice will hit that angle piece you see on the bottom and that will force it out into the tray where it can be picked up. The outside of the dice tower and tray will be stained, but the inside will be painted because why not? We think it looks cool, so we're going to do it. Alright, so we built the three boxes. One's painted green on the inside, one's painted blue, and one is painted black, and so they all work out pretty good. We're going to stain these. They're going to look really awesome and put the plexiglass in, but we had a casualty. The blue paint soaked into the oak in the back of this, so um, I kept putting more coats on it, hoping that it would, um, hoping that it would uh, work out well in here. It did not. And then when we unwrapped it for the masking, we found out why. The, <laughs> the paint leaked through a quarter inch of oak, so I don't know what kind of paint this is, but um, this is ruined, so we're probably gonna, when this eventually dries, it's completely soaked. When this eventually dries, um, we will, uh, we'll probably paint this a solid color because, well, not staining this. So anyway, we're gonna set this one aside. This is, this is a learning exercise here, but we still have these two. So we're gonna work on these. Ignore the blue one. The pieces for the tray are cut and then taped together just to see if they'll work. And they work just fine. You can see that we haven't yet cut the plexiglass to its full height. A piece of blue tape marks off where we're going to cut it. But the dice go through, and even though we put a lot through, it didn't jam up the mechanism. So we think we got a good design here. We're trying super glue for assembly here to see if it works, and I'm wearing blue gloves because of an unfortunate gluing accident earlier today. I don't really want to talk about it. After giving it a few hours to set up, the clamps are removed and it's time to sand the tray. Now that the structure is complete, it's time to stain all those parts that we didn't paint, which is most of it. Everything except the internals is stained. After the stain is dried for a couple of days, water-based polyurethane is applied. This stuff is great. It dries very rapidly and you can recoat within an hour or so of putting on a coat. So you can get two or three coats on in a single day. Try that with oil-based. Remember how we had the plexiglass marked to cut it shorter? Well, we did that. And now the protective plastic, which we left on when we ran it through the table saw because we didn't want to scratch it, is removed. The plexiglass slides into that 1 8 inch router cut that we made earlier, and it fits perfectly. The last step is to add a layer of thin sparkly foam so the dice have a safe place to land. Two complete.
completed dice towers and one that we may either finish or just hang on the wall as a warning to others. We're not sure yet. Thanks to our patrons. We love you. You help us finance these projects. Uh, much more to come. Thank you for your regular support. Uh, it's wonderful. Um, and if you like what we're doing, you want to see what we're up to, subscribe and ring that bell so you know every time we put a video up, there's always something new coming. All right, well, enjoy your gaming, and we'll see you next time.